belangstelling naar voor, voor geometrische vormen. Ja. Waarom? Waarom juist, waarom juist die vorm? Ja, waarom, wat, wat wilt u nou? Dat, waarom? Dat, dat kun je niet zeggen. Het is zoals het is. Die, uh, die belangstelling die bestaat er nou eenmaal voor de, de wetmatigheid. De wetmatigheid in de natuur kun je wel uh, dat noemen. Hè?
amazing thing about M.C. Escher is that he represents the perfect coming together of mathematics and art. These are two different worlds, but in his work they're brought together as one. Tessellation is about regular patterns that divide the plane. That means that they effectively they split the plane up into lots of little tiles, and those tiles fit together perfectly. They don't overlap and they don't leave any gaps. It may seem that the premise of tiling a plane or surface with regular repeating units is a very simple idea, but it's absolutely fundamental to mathematics, and the reason is that it's about symmetry. What Escher does with this rather simple, stark, abstract mathematics is to add a human dimension and a fantastical dimension. He has little animals, little lizards, dragon-like creatures, funny little men, goblins, and things like that. And he uses those for the shapes of his tiles. Escher's work really divides into two different periods. His early work is intuitive, no contact with mathematicians, his interest in tessellations, and that's about it. After he made contact with mathematicians, it becomes much deeper mathematically. You get all sorts of sophisticated structures. He's interested in dimension, in the shape of space, the topology of space, in infinity. Cosmologists think that our universe might actually be Escher-shaped. So some of Escher's work may have anticipated very deep features of modern cosmology.